ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spurs Live. We are back with another match preview and we are joined obviously by my co-host Matthew. How are you, Matthew? Very good. Uh, very happy right now. A uh, bit nervous about tonight's game, but we'll see. Cool. Look, tonight's game is going to be it's going to be a very, very intense game, you can say, because we're going to get into all the little details. But before we do start, make sure to subscribe to the channel, um, follow our socials down there, and um, let's just get into it. Let's first of all start with a couple of changes to this week's um, lineup that we we kind of know in advance. Um, Let's start off with the more obvious one. It's the Hoiberg instead of Basuma. Now, for Fulham, we saw this substitution um, happen uh, and Hoiberg did start the game. He played very, very well, in my opinion. What, what were your thoughts coming to this Palace game where they're a bit more aggressive than Fulham, in my opinion, um, and you're having Hoiberg as a central defensive midfielder? What, what are your thoughts? Well, Basuma's potentially back for this <laughs> game. Yeah, but, but the problem is, is that he's on a fourth yellow card. And but if he gets so, to... I, I personally, if it was my decision, yeah. I would rest Basuma and keep him so he's definitely not uh, off for the Chelsea game. That would be my... 100% agree, yeah. That would be my, my thinking. Uh, I thought Hoiberg, he had a decent game. Yeah. Against Fulham. Uh However, we really, really miss Basuma's uh, aggressiveness and his progressive uh, his progressive runs. Yeah, because he takes the ball, he'll take out a defense, and then he'll run thirty yards before passing it. Whereas Hoybier mm -hmm. gets the ball, and he always looks for that early pass. He doesn't he doesn't break the lines the same way Basuma does. However, um. With the knowledge that Michael Elise and Eberich Chiesa are both out for this game tonight, yeah, I think play Hoiberg again. So, so, so let's just um, for a second uh, talk about Hoiberg in terms of the progressive runs of his. Do you, do you think that is what defines uh, and is it makes a difference between Bissoum and Hoiberg in terms of that running ability and the and the stamina that both players have? Yeah, I think so. Like, um, you see Basuma, he breaks the play in front of the defence. Yeah. He does it so often. He breaks the play in front of the defence, which is great because it takes the pressure off of our defence. But it's yeah. not just that. It's he breaks the play and then he's always taking the ball on the half turn. As soon as he breaks the play, he then just strides forwards. Yeah. Um. Whereas Hoybjerg, he's able to break the play in a similar way, but he always then looks for a sideways pass. Exactly. Exactly. No, spot on, spot on there. I think, you know, we got a couple of players who do a bit too much side passing. Oli Skip as well as another player who does that quite a fair amount. But look, this is another uh, position where... Uh, there's been news regarding that left back position. That's new Dogi. I'm sure you've heard he came. He came off with a slight discomfort versus Fulham. Um, now, what, what what do you do for this thing? I haven't I haven't seen whether he's fit yet or not. I don't know exactly exactly. So that's so that's, so that's the thing. What what would you do if you're Ange right now and you've got the option of like playing playing uh, Udogi, but he has played against. Fulham, he's about to play against the big game against Chelsea. Would you play him again against Crystal Palace, or would you maybe rest him for Ben Davis? I don't know. What would you do? Um, well, no, because Ben Davies is probably not fit as well. No, Ben Davis is fit. Ben Davis is completely fit. He's all good. Are you certain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I don't know. Then, yeah, I mean... If he's got a niggle, I'd potentially play Davies. Look, we're playing Crystal Palace. They are a weaker team. Um, yeah. I feel like without Eze and uh, Elise, Fulham are about... Uh, sorry, Palace are about Fulham's level. Okay. Okay. Because well, you're taking out both their best players. I get you, yeah? Yeah, 100%. Like, they're, they're not an amazing team, but they do have two very good players players in Michael Elise and Eberich Chiesa, right? Yeah. And yeah. if you remove those two players, I do think that their level drops. Like, 
okay, they're still a Premier League team. I understand that. And we're playing them away, so there is that. But I do think that... Um, I think I think Davies can can do a job against them. Yeah. Because I, I agree, yeah. We're not the reality is we're not playing against uh your Sackers, your Sterlings, your um we're not playing against those brilliant progressive uh wing forwards. Correct. And in against those, a dogie is so important to have. But yeah. If he's if a has got a slight niggle, then I would rather rest him for this game rather than risk him because I want him I want him fit against Chelsea. Yeah, no, um, spot on there, spot on. I I, I I I agree with you on that. I agree with you with the fact that Basuma also needs to be rested. Um, now this is more of a general question. I I I, I mean I want to get into a number of facts for this match, but before we get into it. In the on the pitch, you've got obviously your your goalkeeper, your cent your, your centre backs, your midfielders, and your attackers. Now, what position on the pitch? Leave out the centre backs. I feel like it's a bit too obvious. The centre backs. Um, before we continue, though, before we do continue, we do actually have a a, a mid appearance of Josh. Unbelievable! He was <laughs> able to get into the stream. Oh, welcome, welcome, Hello, Josh. Everyone. Shadow. <laughs> Uh, I, I literally just messaged Joss asking if he was joining us. So, good time. <laughs> how are you? Really, yeah, Josh, how are you? How are you? I'm good. It's been a, a hectic time. Uh, as as you lads know, um, there is a new addition to, to the household. You know, we've got a, a, a baby bro has arrived. So, yes, congratulations, been a hectic time. To everyone. Congratulate Josh in the Thank comment you. section down below. Yeah. Yeah. Look, me and I, his uh, father are currently fighting for his allegiance. Um, yeah, I've got his yeah. Spurs onesie already, so I'm, I think I'm winning. Yeah, but I said this the other day, right? I was like, I was like, wait a second, you've got another baby brother. How old's your mum? I'm only three and a half years younger than his mum. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I know. There you go. There you go. Well, look, lad. I'm basically, um, I'm basically as I could be his dad, essentially. Well, this is what defines Spurs life. You've got completely different, completely different uh, generations, you see. Uh, <laughs> look, um, Josh, I, I, I'll, I'll quickly smooth you into the conversation. What we're talking about right now is uh, we just went over the Udogi and Basuma, the fact that then they're, they're kind of like in doubt of the game uh, for different reasons. Now, uh, the, the question I was going to come with, to Matt is, um, Matt, now, you know, in the positions, <laughs> is that your little baby? Uh, this is my your, baby. In, in in the in the Tottenham side, obviously you've got the, the, the different roles, different uh positions in the team. Now, which position, except for the centre backs, do you think that there's a massive drop in terms of level and quality? Because we're seeing Hoyberg coming in for Basuma. I think there is a drop, but I, I don't think there's a massive drop. Now you see Ben Davis coming in for Dogi. I wonder how much this drop is gonna be. So Matt, what position do you feel like when you see the replacement of that? You know, player, it's just a massive drop, and we and and we can see a significant change in terms of and ball. Um, I think uh, to be honest, I think the <laughs> shadow. Sorry, um, so I think that the uh, the Fulham game was the perfect example of this. Yeah, right, because we were in control, we were all over them. And then we made changes towards the uh, with the last sort of twenty minutes to go, and our level of football dropped significantly. Right, mm. Lo Celso instead of Madison, not good enough. Uh, Skip instead of Saar, not good enough. Um, I actually think that Davies instead of a Dogi will cause us less problems than a lot of other places on the pitch. I actually think Davies is a. I think Davies is a good footballer. I think he can play the left back position. He's uh, he maybe doesn't offer quite as much going forwards as a Dogie does, but I actually think Davies can do a good job. I, I've got faith in Davies stepping into that left back role and doing a good job. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think our attacking midfield. Uh, I think Lacelso and. 
Madders. Uh, Madders is a huge drop off just yeah. because of how unbelievably good he is. I do think Hoybiag is a massive drop off to Basuma, but mm-hmm. he he does a good enough job. He's just a massive drop off to the player that Basuma is. Yeah. Um. I t- I, having said that, I think one of our biggest areas would be losing Son up front. Mm. Okay. If we remove Son from that number nine, like, I'm not going to lie, Richarlison, we've seen him. He's had a few opportunities. He doesn't hit the mark. Whereas Son, I mean, look at look at Son's first goal against Fulham. Yeah. Right? They gave him a bit of space. They were a bit confused, so the players weren't right on him. And he literally made a bit of space and stuck it in the top right-hand corner. Like, Son mm. is just so clinical. Right. Is, 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 he, is he, the except for Haaland, is he probably one of the most clinical players in the Premier League, lads? Is he, is he probably... I think he's I, one of I, the best finishers in the world. I, I, yeah. I, I think he is more clinical than Haaland. You can see by his XG numbers, I've ne- I, there's no player in world football that performs their XG season on season like Hyung Min Son. You know, I'm not saying he's a, a better striker than the greats of this generation, but he's one of the best finishers of his generation. Right. He is unbelievable. And if he stays at nine, he's getting 20 plus goals this season. He's just extended his career by three, four years. This position will change. It's yeah. completely yeah. changed his, like, his perspective years with us. Mm-hmm. Like, Honestly, he is. Um, I love him as a number nine. Yeah, I've 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 been talking about it for a couple of years, but then obviously when you've got Harry Kane in the team, you're never gonna switch Son inside. You know, do you know what I mean? He kind of he kind of reminds me of like kind of like Ronaldo kind of like type of career in terms of the positions. You know, start off on mm. the left or or, or, on the, or like start off on the wing on the wing spot, then. And then move move smoothly to a striker position. Um, but look, let, 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 let's just get into uh, uh, now the main topic of, of, of the show. It's the obviously Matt Phoebe versus Crystal Palace. Josh, as we talked previously, and, and a really good point was made by Matt saying about that left back position where we're not that threatened on that left back position because they're attacking on the left winger. Sorry, the right wing of Crystal Palace um, aren't as threatened as Saka might be or Salah is. So I, I, I want to get your 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 um, your prediction for for the game now. How how will the game go ahead? Do you think it's going to be a tight game? Do you think we're going to completely dominate them, or or will we? You know, will we potentially concede a couple? What what are your thoughts going into the game? Well, I think we're quite lucky at the time that we're playing Palace because they've got no Eze and Elise who are their two best players by a country mile. And, and if Davies is going to play, thank God Elise isn't. Because Elise it absolutely torches full-backs. He's so good. And Eze the same. He just floats about. So, so I think it's massive that they're out. But even w- without those two being out, Palace have been ravaged by injuries. I really feel for them. I really feel for Palace. Because I think other than Chelsea... Who may be United at this point. They've got the worst I, injury list in the league. I will feel for them as of tomorrow morning. But when we're playing them, I don't really have that yeah. uh, sympathy. To be honest, but it's one of those where I think that's... There's not much Palace can do here. I think they're going to have to low block. And I think they will low block, as most teams will against us this season. Um, I think they're going to have to low block for the 90 minutes, basically. And try, and like Fulham did just take us on the break when they can and use the channels if they can, because I think that those channels, those fullback channels are the best way that people counter us. I think against Fulham, Willian had a lot of joy. It wasn't Poro's fault necessarily, but Poro, Willian had a lot of joy sort of drifting in and out of those wide channels coming inside every now and again. So I think if they're going to hurt us, it's through through those wide areas um, on, the, on the break. But I think this is going to be the same game that we saw against Fulham, the same we saw against Luton. Deep block, can we break it down? And we're going to really need a bit of high, quali- high, high quality play or a great individual moment from someone like James Madison once again. And I, I, it's a bit boring, I know, talking about, oh, we're going to have to get Madison to bail us out of a low block. But what, what else are we supposed to do? We don't have creativity elsewhere on the pitch to be able to unlock yeah. a defence like he can. Yeah. No, yeah, well, I- well, well said, Pat, yeah. 
having said that, Josh, like they say, oh, we're going to have to rely on Madders to get us out of it. Well, we have 11 players on the pitch and Madison's one of them. So yeah, it's way for like it, I, I think no, it's a stupid criticism that people make, but I think it, I just don't. It annoys me when people say, "Oh, you've just gone from relying on Kane to relying on Madison." Well, well, yes, he's he's like arguably the best player in the league on form at the minute, other than Rodri. Like, yeah, but of it, course it, we're relying on him. No he's on fire. To, it's no different to people going, "Oh, Liverpool rely on Salah," or Arsenal rely on Odegaard. Well, I, sorry, I I, I, think, I think one of the main differences though between relying on Kane and relying on Madders is that. Matters. It's his job. Like that is actually his job to, to create to, to to maneuver the ball from the defense to the striker. That's his job. King's job was not to maneuver the ball. King's mm. job is a striker to be clinical in front of goal and to score. I feel like now when people say, "Oh, uh, Matters is just going to bail you out now," I think it's a completely different circumstance because that is Matters' job. It's his job to bail us out now, kind of kind of thing. Yeah, but I, I I agree. It's a ridiculous criticism because. Like, we have 11 players and Madison is one of those 11. So going, oh, you're just yeah. relying... On, well, every team relies on their players. It doesn't matter whether it's Madison, whether it's Basuma, whether it's a Dogi, like Van de Vette, Like, it doesn't matter. You rely on your players. And just and saying, oh, well, oh, this player... Oh. Okay, so all basically, all they're essentially admitting is that Madison... Is a brilliant footballer. And he's the best ten in the league at the minute. But like, it's. Do you know what it, the the spotlight wouldn't be on Madison as much if one of our other players, other than Son, felt like shooting once and every every now and again. It's one thing I wanted to bring up. Kulisevsky. I, I feel like I'm banging my head against the brick wall with Kulisevsky because he's okay. so brilliant at hold up play and progressing the ball at the pitch. But God, man, just just shoot. Just hit the ball. At the, honestly, it's like that moment against Fulham. He receives that pass from Cootie yes. off that amazing run from Romero. He just has to slot it home and he tries to cut back. And we've just got, we've almost, I hate to say this, we've, we've, got, we've got this Arsenal thing about us. Do you know how they used to want to score the perfect goal? Yeah. Like they yeah. literally want to pass it into an open net. We just seem to be doing that. Like Adoji was in behind in the same first half against Fulham. He got in behind after that unbelievable like interchange between him, I think Sar and Madders, I think it was on the left hand side. Gets in and he just tries cut and instead of shooting, he just tries to cut it back and then cut it back again and then cut it back again. It's just like, oh, someone pull the trigger. I'm less annoyed about a left back doing that. Yeah, I'm more annoyed about Kulisevsky because yeah. I think his number. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I don't really care about as much about his output as other people do. I think other people just look at the fact he's only got two goals and no assists and have gone, oh, he's been crap this season. It's not true. He's been actually been really, really important, but he could have been a high, to a high, to, to a higher level output wise if he pulled the trigger as he should. Exactly. No, last game I feel like Kulisevsky was. Was pretty shocking. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not gonna try to quote this. I think it was really shocking. But against Luton, in my opinion, it was good. The rest of the games has been pretty good. Um, but again, so now lads, we're going up to Crystal Palace. They're sitting 11th in the league, 12 points. If we win, we go five points clear. Coming up to the new week, or yeah, coming up to the uh, game week 10. Um, how does it feel to be top of the league, lads? Come on. Matt, what are you, what are you saying? Top of the league, Tottenham? Are we, I, are we going? <laughs> quite frankly, I have stopped paying attention to it because it's ridiculous. Yeah. And I, as a Tottenham fan, I have absolutely no idea what to do. Top of the league. Yeah, it's unsustainable, but I'm enjoying it. And I think that's the whole point, though. We've just got to enjoy it. Yeah. Because will we finish top? I don't think so. Because over the whole season, no, Arsenal, but... City, Liverpool, even Newcastle, you could argue, have just got that a bit more depth to go a bit further in. Well, um, they've just you... lost Tonali, haven't they? They have just lost Tonali at the minute, yeah. But I think in transition, they're just a nuts team. Like they're, they're statistically they put up they in are, transition are, is ridiculous. They're... But losing a player like Tonali is going to have an effect on your team. Like Tonali is one of their better players. Yeah. And, I mean, AC Milan, absolutely, like, AC Milan absolutely bossed it, didn't they? Sold him for mm -hmm. 55 million, and then he's banned three months later. Um, genius. Um, no, I... Uh... I'll be happy with fourth. 
I'd still be happy with fourth, fifth. Like, I'd still really be happy. I've been a little bit more. I've been a little bit more uh, optimistic than Josh there. Do you I not wanna... think though that we I'm are? Gonna... Like, I know everyone says it, but we are like a Madison injury away from oh, some real troubles. Like, especially with yeah. this running that we've got at the minute. Uh, but no, I'm a little bit more optimistic. I would like a top three finish. I'm not. Oh. Stu- I'm not stupid enough to think. I'm not stupid enough to think that we are going to sit at the top of the Premier League for the next 28 games, right? Um, However, with the start we've had, we're a quarter of the way through the season right now. Um, I would, I would, I would love a top three finish. Mm. Top, that, so we got so we got top, top, top fourth yeah. or third is realistic. But what yeah. annoys me is I've seen a lot of other like rival fans saying that what we're doing is completely unsustainable and that you know we're outperforming XG. It's actually not true. We've actually got the highest open XG of the entire league. We've got this, I think, the second best defensive record. Um, I think we won like which I'll be real, our defensive record is quite unkind to us because Vicario has been a joke. Um, and we should have been put to the sword a couple of times against a couple of teams. But we have, on our performances, I wouldn't say other than a couple of standout ones against sort of Burnley United, we've actually played to the best of what we've seen of Angeball. Like we, we've just grinded out results in quite a professional manner. I don't think there's been anything massively unsustainable about our performances. Yeah, no, I, I think, but the thing is, coming up to that January transfer window, it's it's either hit or miss in my opinion. Either we're gonna either we're gonna go into that January transfer window, get the players we need, and finish at a high point, or or no, I'm thinking I'm thinking third or fourth like you guys predict. Yeah. Or if we don't get the players we need for the squad depth I'm talking about, I'm talking about the 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 Madders substitution in terms of who comes in for Madders if if X happens if Y happens. You know, if, if we get a solid centre back, we need at least a centre back in January. So January, in my opinion, is going to be a pinnacle point for Tottenham Hotspur to get their targets in. Uh, how many times does that happen, though? Ever? Exactly. Yeah. True. It, it, it's how many times does that happen? It's what they're doing really well. Happens. Yeah, but right, Man City, Manchester City, they'll win yeah. the league, they'll win the treble, and they will always go out in the market and buy players. Tottenham, on for the other hand. Qualities. For similar qualities of their current starting eleven, yes. Yeah, right. And Manchester City, and that's what the best teams do. Whether they're winning or not, right, they will win a league or a trophy. And you go, oh, they're really good. But they will still go out and buy players. Right? Well, Arsenal or Chelsea, one of them's going to get Tony in January. One of them's going to do it. I don't think we'll yeah, cough up the money for Tony. Chelsea. I think I, it will probably be Chelsea I, I, or Arsenal. I actually don't want Tony. You the don't want Tony? Tony. The more I've thought about it, yeah, I don't I can really understand it. Matt's point. I can understand. I get what you're saying, but like, I don't think it, he would be a bad addition to the side. And I think for that run in, I think he would guarantee us top four. I think for his sake, it would be bad. For Ivan Tony's sake, it would be bad. I don't think he would want to join a top four. But then it's like, where does Sonny play? Start. I get that whole thing. It's like, where does Sonny play? Because he can't put yeah. Sonny back on the wing. We, just, we can't exactly. do it now. It's too. Now, I think look, if we're going to get a strike, we need yeah. another younger one. Sort of a bit older than Valise, maybe, but or maybe around Valise's age, but a bit more established. So not, that, that smoothly gets into the next uh, little bit of the final uh, match preview. It's, it's it's the youngster. I want to talk about the youngsters in that Tottenham side now. We're we're starting to see a little bit. Not starting to see. We're starting to see more of a, a Valise now starting to come into the team a little bit. We saw him, you know, ten minutes versus Fulham, um, and you know we got we got a couple of youngsters. Uh, uh, Vicario Doki there. The, well, Vicario is young for a goalkeeper. Udoki, pretty young. Um, what, what, what's happening now with our youngsters? Will, will they get a chance in this Tottenham side? You know, you look at the likes of Scarlett. I mean, I, I just want to get your thoughts on this on on the on the youngsters in Tottenham because we do have we do have some sort of you know Dorrington's kind of quality. Phillips. What, what do you think they'll get a chance in this Ange team? Anyone? I I don't I don't know if this in this run in in this current climate that we we're in whether we can rotate that like whether we can really give youngsters that Don Lee is the only one that I can see getting any sort of minutes. Yeah. Um because he's just class. But and he's been on the bench a couple of times. Valise, I think, will get 
like the minutes he's been getting consistently now, like, you know, that 10 minutes at the end if we're two, three goals up, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And I was impressed with him against Luton. Um, yeah. Not as much against Fulham, but I think the whole team was pretty poor against Lu- against Fulham in the last 10. I think Ange, I know I get why he made all those subs, but it killed us off in the second half completely. There was no rhythm to the team at all, but there's definitely space for these youngsters to get at it in the first team. Like Skip's clearly not good enough. That's I, I hate to say it, he clearly isn't. Like, I think his spot could definitely be one that's up for grabs. Skip, Those backup centre backs are up for grabs. Skip should be starting for Fulham. I don't think Skip would start for Fulham to be honest. Not over Jao Paulinho or, or Harrison Reed. I don't think. I honestly don't think Skip would start for them. All right, he should be starting for Birmingham. Oh, yeah, he's getting there. Uh, do you know what I feel with Skip? It's the same thing as Winks. Like he's a very high end Championship, low end Premier League player, but we've just kept going with him because he's one of our own and we want him to be good so badly but you can just tell like like against Fulham he made that brilliant slide tackle was almost surprised that he won it and they just fucking gave the ball away straight away just flung it trying to make a hero pass across the pitch and yeah. he, he just wants it so bad but he doesn't have that quality so I think his spot's up for grabs the backup centre-backs definitely up for grabs I can't see us playing Dyer even if even if we do get injuries and if we do play Dyer we, we basically you may as well commit suicide on the pitch because it is in Spurs are committing suicide on the pitch right there because it, him in a high line he's dead instantly yeah. dead one top we one ball over the top we've seen that story a million times finished yeah fair enough Matt what, what, what are your thoughts in, in terms of youngsters do you agree with, uh, with Josh um yeah, I think I do. I mean, Valise is starting to feature. Mm. So I'm hoping that he comes good. Um, I think Ashley Phillips, I don't think we'll see Phillips until next season. Yeah. Barring an injury crisis, I don't think so. Yeah, I think, I don't think, I don't think, I don't really see Phillips featuring until next season, really. Um, Don Lee. Great player, mm. and I'd, I'd I'd quite like to see him getting getting a bit of game time, Me coming too. on coming on for the last ten minutes, and see what he can produce because he is an exciting player. Um, what other youngsters have we got? It's really at Dorrington. We've got Dorrington, but then... It, do you know what? We've got Lancashire, Sons at Bell, but they're obviously not going to play yeah. over Valise yeah. on and whatnot. Like we've got yeah, a lot my, of my, depth, my, but... my point, my point with this discussion is saying how you know we saw with Poch how he gave a lot of the youngsters the, the time and day to try and prove to him. I'm just hoping that Andrew will do the same. But look, uh Matt, what is your score prediction coming to the Tottenham Hotspur or oh, sorry, Crystal Palace versus Tottenham game? It's uh Porton one. What are your score predictions? I honestly I think I preferred it when we were losing games. Because now, okay. because now I'm just inc- like, there's so much pressure on every fixture. I'm stressed. I'm so and, stressed. And all now the time. I'm just so nervous. At, like, literally, this Palace game, I should just be relaxed. Oh, yeah, we got Palace. But instead, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, we're top of the league. Can we stay top of the league? Can we go five points clear? Oh my I, God. I heard someone say at the beginning of the stream, oh, I don't look at the league. I, I, I don't look at the league. What is this? You just said at the beginning of the stream you don't look at Lee. What are you stressed about now? He's waffling. He's absolutely right. waffling. Of course, <laughs> of, course, of course I look at the league. I, I just try not to because now Tottenham are top of it, yeah. it, it makes me nervous. It stresses me out. Uh, score prediction, I'm going to go 1-0 to Tottenham. Ooh. I think well, it's gonna even, be- even with the two star players of Palace out is it as well, are you sure? I, I, yeah, but I think I think uh, as Josh said earlier, I think they're going to be playing a low block, and I yeah. think it's it's up to us to break them down. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm optimistic about us keeping another clean sheet, which would be amazing. Um, I, I think we've had the most clean sheets of any team in the league so far this season. I thought, I thought definitely up there. Up, no? Might be Liverpool, but we've had what is it, we had four or five. I know we've got eight uh, goals conceded, I think. Yeah. But no, I think... It's either I think... eight or nine. I think the best defence of the league is Liverpool's or City's with 
like eight or seven. No, I, th- I think we've now had the most clean sheets of any team in the season. Uh, I'm just checking I think, it now. I think. Um, yeah, Josh will corroborate Palace. for us. Palace. Palace. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on, lads, lads, lads. Well, one I was going to say, there's no way. I know they draw a lot, but there's no <laughs> way. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's see. Well, Sam Johnson has been on fire for them this season, though. Yeah, and you just seeing. know, you just know Sam Johnson, who's been on fire, will put out a worldie against us. Do you remember, do you remember that Palace game? It was years ago, so you might not, but when Gaita just turned into Superman against us. Yeah. I think we hey. lost like one 0 or something like that. But this is what I'm seeing. It look, it looks like, it looks like this is this is what it is. It, it looks like this. Okay, it so like... yeah, yeah. Palace. I said Sam Johnson's been on fire. So, yeah, Newcastle, Tottenham, Tottenham, Newcastle, and Palace yeah. are are joint. Yeah. So Tottenham, Just, yeah. Tottenham, Newcastle, and Palace have all had four. Yeah, because I think the reason it's a bit deceiving is because Palace and Newcastle, when they conceded, when it's rained, it's poured a little bit, if you get what I mean. They've kept some clean sheets, but when they've lost, that like I think Palace got battered four the other week, and obviously Newcastle conceded, what was it, for, like for, uh, three to Brighton, and then a couple to City yeah. and whatnot. So I think that's what might skew it a little bit in terms of who's been defensively competent. So, Matt, you're going 1-0? Yeah, I think I'm going 1-0. I think a tight game, low block from mm. Palace. Hopefully, we keep a clean sheet, but I think we will get a goal. Good stuff, good stuff. Josh, what's your, what's your score prediction? I'm inclined to agree. I'd actually bite your hand off for a 1-0 at this point. I just want in and out <laughs> like a thief in the night. I just want those three points in and out. But uh, I'll go slightly more optimistic. I'll go 2-0. Um, but I don't think Palace will offer too much. and I don't think they want to offer too much. I think Hodgson will have them just camped in for the 90. I think it'll yeah. be very tough. If we get an early... Go- That's the thing. If we take manage to snatch an early chance and get in early doors, I think Changes they'll be too. But if we go, if we're still going into half time and, it, and it's nil nil or one or one nil, God forbid, I think it'll be very tough. Josh, hundred percent, mate, hundred percent. Um, look at that Luton game, right? Yeah. Oh, we could have killed them off. If Richarlison had grabbed his two early chances, mm. if Porro had grabbed his early chance, it should have been two or three nil in the first fifteen minutes. Yeah, and at that point, the whole game would have changed. We'd have probably ended up winning five or six nil, but yeah. instead we had a player sent off. We were then mm. on the back foot, and we managed to snatch the victory. But um, if we get the early goal, it makes such a difference. I'm not gonna lie. If we get an early goal against Palace, I can see it being three or four nil. At, at the end of the day, it, 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 the way I see this 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 season, last season I was looking at the games and I was watching, it and I was like, it's not up to us how the game will go. It's not. Because it's up to the opposition. If the opposition turned up, they were going to win. This season, I feel like it's up to Tottenham. If Tottenham want, if Tottenham turn up, they're going to win the game. It, it sounds a bit a bit obvious, but for example, we create ourselves our own problems. You just said about it, Matt. You know, you dive, you get a red card. Done. We created ourselves that problem. You don't convert your chances, uh, your doors. You're you're you're, you're tanking to that one nil win, uh, one nil lead uh, throughout the whole ninety minutes. I think I think coming to this Palace game. I, I kind of agree with Josh here, but I'm gonna. I'm, I think we might concede a goal. I would say two one or three one. I'm, I'm, it depends how the how the game starts. I, I'll, I'll say two one, um, just because I'm not I'm not so uh, keen on Davis replacing Udogi. I know we spoke about it earlier, uh, but it is what it is. Um, I feel like if Richarlison can convert his chances, we could be talking about a three I'd, to four. I'd actually, actually starts. Is, is Brennan not yet? I'd like to uh, see. Johnson, it, yes, yes, I'd yes. actually like to see Johnson start over. Yeah, me too. Richardson. Would you? I mean, the, the, I I saw him come on for the last fifteen minutes. I want to say against Fulham, and he wasn't. He didn't look amazing. I'm not even. Yeah, right. but think, with all due respect, that's him being fed by Lo Celso and Skip. Yes, if, true. If very, very true. If he's he being was running like, off scraps, to be fair, but do you know what? Richardson hasn't even been that bad. If you actually look at his stats, he's, he's actually got well. like four or five goal contributions in the league, which is like yeah. way higher than yeah, a lot like, of other strikers. Honesty, I, I actually you can just see it in the way he plays. If it's the eye test with, with Richardson, you can just see it. Yeah, yeah like, not on the same in level. all honesty, I thought Richardson actually had a good game against Fulham. I thought he played well. 
I actually thought he had a good game. Like, I'm not going to lie. I watched him against Bournemouth earlier in the season and he was falling over the ball. It was horrendous. Like, he looked mm. so far out of place. Against yeah. Fulham, against Fulham, I actually thought Richarlison had a decent game. Um, the problem is he just has no eye for goal at the moment. Yeah. No, but true, I just think true, tactically true. sometimes he can be look a bit lost. I think sometimes when a dogie inverts and overlap like makes those inverted overlapping runs in on the inside, he's just Richardson just doesn't see it or he's just he just doesn't know how to get the ball into him. He gets yeah. a bit stuck and he stands up his, his fullback one on one and he gets stuck there and then a doji has to come back out and then we have to play back around to the other side. I think he just slows it down sometimes. But what's important about Richardson, he loves to get his body into the tackles. And that's what I like. I like the determination to get He works hard. But, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's kind of the goals and assists we're looking for, not really the defensive side. But look, lads, um, hopefully you all enjoyed that match uh, preview. Uh, Josh, Matt, thank you guys so much for uh, joining. Um, obviously, uh, Spurs Live co-hosts right there in front of you guys. I can get their signatures online, you know, costs a thousand pounds for each each uh, signature. But guys, um, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We just hit 1.3k, so thank you so much for all your uh, support. We gratefully appreciate it. Um, any last words? Any any last words? Come on, you Spurs. We're going five points clear. We're going <laughs> five points clear. <laughs> Love to see that. Thank you all so much for joining. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Get in there. Thank you.